All right, guys, so in this video, I want to share a few ways that you can use ChatGPT plugins for research. Now, when I say research here, I mean academic research, but in general, you can do all sorts of research using ChatGPT and ChatGPT plugins. And I want to cover some of the tools that you can use. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started with the basics. So the basics for me would be searching for papers. Now for that, you can use a plugin called Scholarly AI. Now Scholarly AI allows you to search for scientific and research papers uh, in a way like in this example, I'm saying, show me top five papers about similarities between artificial intelligence and human intelligence. And it showcases and it used the plugin to go fetch current papers and research on that topic. So it listed the five um, research papers that I asked, and it gave me a few a uh, brief explanation of each. So one of the, um, the papers that I was interested in from the suggestions is this one, Insights on Transfer Optimization because experience is the best teacher. So I'm gonna check this one out. Semantic similarity from natural language from an ontology analysis. All right, it doesn't seem that connected. And again, it's not, that, it's not like it's gonna be perfect every time, but it's, I gotta say it's pretty amazing. So Scarlet AI is one plugin. Another plugin related to research that you can use is called Penrose Analyst. Now the Penrose Analyst is very similar, at least I use it in a similar way to Scholarly, and I also use it for um, researching the latest developments in um, research, uh, also to fetch papers from archive and all sorts of stuff. So in this case, the use case that I'm showing here is I asked for the latest news and developments on research about augmentation of human learning and artificial intelligence, which in essence is what this channel is all about. And it gave me really interesting suggestions. It said, okay, so uh, first it gave me some latest news. So what's AGI and why are experts, experts skeptical? AI is taking over larger puzzles and then gave me some research papers, naive artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence and cooperation. So this is one of my favorite ones from the suggestions that I got from Perros. Overall, pretty useful plugin for researching uh, the latest developments in research, archive papers, etc. There's another one that's called, there are few, two more that are related to researching papers, but you get the gist. You can ask ChatGPT to go fetch current papers on any topic you want to search for, and it will give you a brief report of those papers. Now, moving on. One of my favorite applications of ChatGPT plugins is this plugin called Show Me, where you can create a diagram from any piece of text. So in this case, I just you know asked ChatGPT to generate some text related to some complex system. So it generated a distributed computing system as an example, and then it gave me a description. And then what I what I did, what I did was I asked to take this description and use the Show Me plugin to create a diagram showcasing that complex system. And this is what I got right here. So you can do that with code. You can do that with pieces of text like this. So I would say that this is extremely interesting and re completely related to research because imagine that you have, let's say, a bunch of notes on different papers that you were researching and you want to you know, you get a visual look on how they connect to each other. So you can just feed it to ChatGPT and use this plugin to create a diagram of that text. So overall, fascinating use case. Now, next one uh, that we're going to talk about is obviously ask your PDF. Now, I'm going to open up a new chat and then I'm going to come here in GPT-4. I'm going to click on the plugins and then I'm going to enable the ask your PDF plugin, which is right here, ask your PDF. Perfect. And now I'm going to just say something like, I'm going to find a PDF. So let's get the attention. So you need paper. Okay. So here we are. So all I need to do is feed the model, feed ChatGPT plugin with the PDF. In this case, I'm going to be feeding the uh, attention is all you need paper. And I can ask questions to the PDF. So I can say, give me a concise summary on this paper. And now what the model is going to do is it's using the Ask Your PDF plugin to access the paper. And there you go. It's giving me a summary on that paper. But 
a summary is not all that it's doing. The fascinating thing here is that I can ask questions about that paper, right? That's the thing. I can chat with the PDF. So I can say something like, how does the author define attention in this paper? It will use the Ask Your PDF plugin to answer my question. There you go. The author's defined attention, the context of the transformer model as a mechanism to compute relevance of different parts of the input sequence for each part of the output sequence. Introduce a specific type of attention called scale dot product attention. The answers here make sense with the context of the paper. So this is one great use of ChatGPT for research, which is to have a conversation with PDFs. For the next example, now we're gonna, we, won't, we can have conversations with PDFs, but we can also have conversations with actual web pages. So let's say that I had a blog post like, let's take an example, blog post palm model AI. So this is a blog post from Google about their pathways language model. And here's the blog post. So now I'm gonna take this URL. I'm gonna go back to ChatGPT. So I'm gonna create a new chat. I'm going to go to plugins and I'm going to enable a plugin called, we have a few options. There's link reader and there's web pilot. I found that web pilot worked a bit better, uh, but we can use both. So let's try link reader. So summarize this blog post. And it will use the link read, it will use the ChatGPT, it will use this plugin to summarize that blog post, but beyond just summarizing the blog post, I can fetch structured information. I can do all sorts of interesting things using a plugin like this. So as you can see, there you go. I have structured information. And the cool thing about ChatGPT is that you can always go a little bit beyond just you know summarizing stuff or chatting with content one of the most fascinating use cases for thinking really for just you know elaborating your ideas you know trying to discover something you investigate is that you can restructure text into the format that's more appropriate for what you're trying to do so for example uh okay so the, i'm getting a very extremely like reliable and powerful summary of that text, but I'll structure this output as a table. So I can act, I can ask ChatGPT to just transform the text into a format, for example, as a table, which is just mind blowing because now I can get this table and I have structured information about the thing and I can put it somewhere else and I can, you know, I can move it around so this is just amazing. It's just, it's just insane. It's just such a cool application of just a cool way to interact with data and text data and blog posts, etc. So let's create another example. And in this example, instead of the link reader, we're going to be using the web pilot. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to make it available here. So I enabled the web pilot plugin. And I'm going to say, let's give it another blog post. So let's say blog post, scientific research, neuroscience, and AI. Something, okay, there you go. So a blog post from Google and DeepMind. And I'm going to go back to GPT. I'm going to say, uh, what are the main key points from this blog post? And what ChatGPT is going to do is it's going to use the tool, in this case, it's going to use WebPilot, the plugin, to fetch the information that I'm asking from that blog post. And it's going to give me the structure information that I'm looking for. So it's saying, okay, so this um, blog post here are main key points. Interdisciplinary origins, post emphasize the fields of AI and neuroscience have a long history of mutual influence, which is true. I mean, think about convolutional neural networks. They were largely inspired by the idea of receptive feuds in the um, uh, neurons in V1 cortex of the brain. So, you know, there's a lot of influence between artificial intelligence and neuroscience as research fields. Uh, and there you have it. We're having just structured information, talking to web pages, getting structured 
simplified, summarized information using this plugin. So it's an amazing tool for researchers that want to go through a bunch of URLs, a bunch of blog posts that maybe are not interested in reading everything that, that exists in that blog post because they're looking for something specific. So this is a great research tool. Now, another one that's a bit more specific and yet one of the most fascinating use cases of ChatGPT plugins is Wolfram. So if you don't know what Wolfram is, Wolfram is just what an unbelievable tool that, you know, describes itself as a computational intelligence tool. It's just, it's just amazing. It's Wolfram is one of the coolest tools that you can find on the internet for doing all sorts of stuff. And one of the things that it can do is mathematics. Uh, it's, it can do reasoning in mathematics. And we can use the Wolfram plugin to leverage uh, NLLM, in this case, ChatGPT, to interact with the Wolfram API and do things like this. In this case, I'm actually using the example from Wolfram to do a uh, calculus. So we're doing AP calculus here. So I, I, I gave it an equation and asked, what's the error between f of x and gx? And the model used the plugin to generate a solution, which I cross-checked and it is absolutely correct. So this is just amazing. And another thing that you can do with Wolfram is something like, uh, let's say I have two equations, f of x is equal to x squared to three, x to the third, and g of x is equal to three x squared. Uh, can you block those for me? So I can ask to visualize equations and it will use Wolfram and do some magic. And then one, two, three, look at what happens. Hopefully it will, because I'm testing it right now. So hopefully it will happen. And there we go. Look at that. We can just ask to visualize whatever equation we want to study. And it will use the Wolfram plugin to generate that data. Now, just think about, just stop to think about what that means in terms of the speed with which you can go through mathematical ideas. It's just, it's just unbelievable. And when you hook that up with uh, something called uh, Talkberry, which I'm going to demonstrate right now, which in this case is not a plugin, is actually a Chrome extension. Uh, I'm sure there's a plugin, but I haven't looked into plugins that do speech to text. But I'm going to demonstrate how you can use a connect, how you can connect a speech to text uh, extension to this thing in order to ask for as like as, with your voice, you can ask for something like, you know, plot this data, do this, do that. So let's take here an example. So I'm going to. So here now I enabled the Talkberry extension. I'm going to put it to English US. And then I'm going to press space to ask for something. For example, a plot of the sinus of X plus two and cosinus of X multiplied by three. So I just asked, let's make one correction here. Cosine of X. Yeah. Sometimes it's not going to be a hundred percent perfect. But you can just essentially make whatever correction you want to do. And now I'm going to use Wolfram. Actually, let me just do another little check here. Generate a plot. Well, so you can just ask to visualize data, which I mean, for me, is just insane. It's just an amazing application and a use case of computation because you can ask the computer to do the things that it was designed to do, but you don't have to be typing in. I mean, in this case, you do have to be typing in a little bit, but there you go. And you can, you know, visualize whatever you want to visualize. So this is a great example. Okay. So another one that's really interesting is, uh, I mean, one of the most discussed examples of using, uh, ChatGPT for research is using the code interpreter. However, I haven't, I'm in Europe, I live in Portugal. 
So I haven't gotten access to the code interpreter plugin, but I do have the run GPT Chrome extension, which does something which is very similar. I don't know exactly how it is implemented, but it's very similar to the um, uh, code interpreter plugin because I can execute code in this uh, chat interface. So we can say something like generate some Python code to simulate, I don't know, weather data uh, across the year in multiple countries in Europe. I'm asking for the most random thing I could think of. Generate this data. I'll make a few assumptions. I mean, I love ChatGPT. I love GPT-4. GPT-4 is amazing because now it's explaining to me the assumption that it has to create the data. And then it will create some simulated weather data for these countries using Python code. So here it explains to me the assumptions and then now it's creating the script. And when it finishes generating the script, we're gonna execute the script right here in the terminal Okay, so we're generating some data. This is actually one of the examples of another uh, use case of ChatGPT for research that I was going to discuss that doesn't involve using a plugin, which is to simulate data. Now, I think that for research, this could be just insanely powerful because you might have some behavior or you might have some idea over a certain type of data that you want to, you know, simulate. And I've seen... Uh, a lot of examples of this in research where, you know, people sometimes want just to like prototype some behavior. And for that, they need to simulate some data and do some visualizations. And you can do that with ChatGPT instantaneously, which speeds up the process of, you know, prototyping ideas and getting to something that will get you closer to, to some solution. So let's just continue generating here. It's almost finished. As you can see, it generated some pretty complex weather data for different countries, in this case, the UK, France, Germany, and Italy. So we're finished uh, generating the data. I can run this. So I'm gonna run this in the actual interface to make sure that it, just, it generates some data. Perfect, it does, as you can see, pretty amazing. And now I'm gonna ask ChatGPT generate some meaningful visualizations for this data. So I'm joining both the simulation of the data and the visualization code with just one prompt. And I can come here and I can just say run and let's see if it works out of the box. And there we go. <laughs> so as you can see, we simulated some weather data from, you know, uh, in some different scenarios in these four different countries, and we created some meaningful visualizations inside the ChatGPT interface. I mean, this is just amazing, right? Like, there's nothing, there's, there's not much to say about how cool this is. Research now has been augmented in ways that I think are gonna build the foundations for just amazing discoveries to come. I hope you guys like this video. If you like it, don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you next time. Cheers!